All right, guys, I have been trying to record here for a little bit here. I want to go through the dev announcement here in the forums and talk about the rise of the empire. And there's a lot to unpack here, guys. So if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. Let's get in the video here. All right. First thing that well, everybody's going to see here, right, is the minimum relic requirements for each phase. Relic five all the way up to relic nine in phase six. Now they did preface and say that this was going to be for end game players. So like, I don't want to like jump the gun and say, this is ridiculous, right? What I want to say is that I think that going all the way up to relic nine is a little bit harsh, especially when you're recommended relic nining at phase four, right? The other thing here is that you've got to keep in mind that this is also not only just for, you know, combat missions, but operations, which they're considering platoons, right? So before you could platoon a character regardless of what level they were at. And now you need that character at these relic levels as well. So I don't know. I, I'm i trying to stay positive, right? I think like this territory battle is going to be fun. I think it'll be cool. But it's definitely something that is geared when they said end game. They maybe should have prefaced that they're talking about like the highest level guilds in the game. And not necessarily those who are kind of at our, you know, the level that like I'm at. Because like we'll be able to maybe get some stars in phase one, right? It's going to be a rough go for us for sure. So curious to see how this kind of pans out, right? Um, they have all these modifiers in here. I'm not going to go through every single one of these, right? There's a lot of stuff in here that I just will not have time to go over. But what I want to cover is the platoons, right? Like operations as they call them. So we're going to go to Curasant first, right? So here are the platoons and you'll see right away in slot four, Sonosaurus, right? Got Kaidi Mundi in here. Um, Hondo, like we knew, like they, they've done this before, right? Where they put these characters in here. Now these are things to shoot for, right? So this is a double-edged sword for us right now. We're early on. Yes, this is not going to be fun. But later on, they do have this goal that, you know, once you get Sonosaurus at the level, you know, Relic 5, you can always platoon her, right? You don't have to worry about getting the next one. So they do stay consistent. It's just not going to be fun to platoon all of these different characters in here, right? However, as we get a little bit farther down, we're going to go to Kashyyyk here, right? And boom, Jedi Master Luke, Rey, Ben Solo. Um, Ray, Ray, Commander Tano, Jedi Master Kenobi, right? I mean, this is these are some brutal, brutal characters to have to platoon, right? We're gonna go down here a little bit to the Ring of Kafreen, Jedi Master Luke, right? Profundity, Jedi Master Kenobi, Clone Wars Chewbacca. <laughs> oh, even they just have to keep trolling us, right? So, I mean, at this level, I think this will probably be a Relic Eight. Right, so you need to relegate Clone Wars, Chewy, Eth, Koth. I mean, guys, you know this is some. Whew. Wow, yeah. Um, I mean, this is what they intended, right? They want you to build these characters up to these relic levels. So, you know, again, I mean, I just I'm showing you the end, right? But you saw in the beginning, even no Galactic Legends. But as you get later on down the road, boom, Galactic Legend time in uh, platoons. Right. And like all of these, like in the Death Star, right, all of these characters have to be at Relic 9. So, I mean, Night Sister Acolyte at Relic 9. Jawa Engineer, Relic 9. Whew. Just take a minute, breathe, right? Wow. IG 86. Are you kidding? Uh, all right. Let's get on to some positive news. Guild Event Currency 3, some huge changes here. Really excited. Wat Tambor, Kaidi Mundi Shards. We all expected that. We're all okay with it. And they threw in the Conquest characters. Instead of doing like exclusive characters to this, they threw in the Conquest ones. And I think that's awesome. I really do think that's an amazing change. Really happy about that. Um, I don't even, you know, the only thing we'll cover here is curious if they'll cycle in more of the other characters as they come about, right? And this will kind of be along with Proving Grounds, another way to earn character shards. Um, they're also talking about materials you can buy here. So Omicron's going in shipments. That'll be weekly shipments, you know, um, electrium conductors, zimbital cards, impulse detectors, and GERDA keypads. So making some of those 
I'll say especially the impulse detectors and Gerda keypads. This is a huge change. This is making these things farmable, allowing us to try and work towards those later requirements for this new territory battle. There's going to be two frames of thought here for players. Some of us are going to probably think that the best thing to do is buy the impulse detectors, go to keypads, start building relic eights and relic nines. Others of us are probably going to think that it's going to be smarter to buy the electron conductors and zimital cards and get your teams to relic six, relic seven, so you can participate in those early phases. I think you can do a little bit of both. Um, so we'll kind of see, I'll let you guys know as I get into this, right, what I think, the teams that I'm going to be planning to use, and how I'm going to, you know, modify those to get them to the relic levels that they're going to need. But it's going to be a huge change for the way I have to play, right? This is going to be a huge change. Really happy with these rewards. And then five micro attenuators. I don't know. They, they really have been pushing these things. Um, I think they're great. I just don't think that I'd be buying them over any of these materials. The only thing I'll say is I don't know how much these are going to cost, right? As long as the cost of these is not absurd, this is a great change. That if I can get, you know, two or three Gerda keypads every territory battle, right? Like, I'll be happy. If I can't even get one, I'm going to be kind of salty about that because, like, well, you know, you have this reward and I can't even work towards it, right? So hopefully the conversion rates for these based on the, you know, currency that we're getting isn't absurd. They're going to throw Kyrotex in here, guys. I would not buy Kyrotex out of this. That's just not worth our time. So I want to go back up here. They talk about flattening the rewards down below. Guys, all you need to know there is that they're going to give you more rewards for getting less stars. So that way you can get to the end faster, right? So where we want to go on the forums here, and we want to go down to the arena and character strategy. And they gave a kit reveal for Third Sister. I just want to cover this briefly, right? Because it was released, right? Um... Where I want to cover up is that she is going to be a galactic legend in Grand Arena, right? And they say several, so that basically means Jabba and Lord Vader are off the table for her. Um, the the way we obtain her, right, is Inquisitors, but they all need to be at Relic 7, so that's super fun. And that she'll be required at Relic 8 in Phase 4, so again, super fun. Um, I don't want to cover this in detail because it's going to be a while before anyone has her, right? Or that anyone that you'll, that most of the guys who watch my channel that, you know, outside of maybe one of you guys, right? Most people are not going to be running into Reva anytime soon. But the one I did want to cover here is the Omicron ability for Darth Treya. And this is awesome. I think this is going to be a huge game changing um, Omicron. So right now it's basically about that you know, when they suffer debuffs, right, they get bonus protection. They dispel that. They take damage equal to their max health, right? And then whenever they're critically hit or inflicted, Treya's going to gain offense, right? And Treya does hit like a truck after a while. Like, she really does with those saber throws. But in Grand Arena, excuse me, Sith allies will gain 40% critical damage, max health, and offense. That's huge. Those are three stats that Treya very much likes. When they suffer that, right, they're going to get that protection up. Um, they're going to dispel buffs. They're going to gain critical damage, health steal, max health, and offense, you know, stacking to 100% until the end of the encounter. That's awesome, right? Like, especially for somebody like Darth Treya, right? Like, she is going to start hitting like a truck. She's going to be very tanky. All of these characters are going to get very tanky, very tough to take out. When allied Darth Talon is critically hit or inflicted with a debuff, Treya will gain 12% offense stacking for two turns. Right? So now, it, you know, they're switching to Darth Talon, right? Which took out the Darth Siner Nihilus, um, which I don't know if maybe they're still in there, right? Maybe that's still a part of it and that it's also Darth Talon, right? I think that's the way I'm reading this is that you add in Darth Talon to this, right? So Trey is going to be gaining even more offense. And that 12% stacks until like the end of those two turns. So if they keep getting, you know, stacks and stacks, she's going to hit harder, harder, and harder. And then when your allies, Darth Nihilus, Sign, or Talon are falling, going to fall below 90% for the first time, their cooldowns are refreshed. So you take Nihilus below 90%, someone's getting annihilated next turn. Darth Sion, 
going to get held by Hatred. Darth Talon, cooldowns reset. She can get her Frenzy capability. Like, it's going to be really good. It's going to be super interesting. I can't wait to throw this Omicron on, guys. Super excited to see this. I cannot wait for it to happen. Um, that's the video, guys. I'm not even going to go into the account. Um, I want to get out of here. I know there's a lot to unpack here. So, guys, remember, Wampa is king. Smash that subscribe button. Leave a like. Leave a comment. I love every single one of you. May the force be with you. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.